Hi guys, Nick here, and welcome to another episode of Relaxing Reviews. Today we're going to be looking at another keyboard, but this one's a little bit different. It's a super compact design uh, called the Excalibur from a company called Drevo. Now, as near as I can tell, Drevo is the house brand of a web store called armyourdesk.com, which sells all kinds of peripherals, uh, like mice and keyboards, as well as other PC hardware, including SSDs. And I have one of those SSDs to review in a future episode. Uh, but today, we're going to be focusing on the Excalibur keyboard, which is also available on uh, Drevo's Amazon web store. Now, this is an interesting keyboard for a few different reasons. It's got some uh, unique features that I thought made it worth sharing with you guys, which is why I requested this particular board. Um, one, it's ultra compact. It is 10 keyless, so it lacks uh, a number pad, but uh, it is really, really compressed down as much as you can, really. Uh, you'll see what I mean when we unbox it, but it looks quite unique. Uh, two, it uses genuine Cherry MX mechanical switches, uh, which is always nice to see. Uh, the keyboard that we looked at last time used Cherry MX clones, which performed quite admirably, but uh, there's something to be said for the genuine article, to be sure. Uh, a third noteworthy feature of this keyboard is that it has a, an all-metal chassis, uh, which I'm curious to check out and, and feel how solid it is. Uh, it's also got fixed white backlighting, so no RGB or multicolor here, but uh, it does have several different patterns that uh, you can set it to, similar to the Aki board that we looked at last time. Uh, and it also has what the manufacturer calls specially coded keycaps. Uh, I don't know what that means, but we will find out when we take a closer look at the board. So, uh, this Excalibur from Drevo uh, retails for 90 US dollars, which is quite a bit to ask for one of these boards, but uh, we'll take a look and we'll see if it uh, can justify its price tag and if it can rise above some of the other options in that price bracket. So let's take a closer look at Drevo's Excalibur mechanical keyboard. Okay, so here we have Drevo's Excalibur keyboard. Uh, you can see that the packaging is fairly simple. Uh, there's not a whole lot going on. I wouldn't go so far as to call it uh, minimalistic, but um, it's not gaudy anyway. You can see it's got uh, sort of a, a sword uh, logo going on there, which makes perfect sense because of the name Excalibur. And it says on the front here, it says cherry switches, specially coated keycaps, and a full metal board. Those seem to be their, their selling points. On the top here, it's highlighting the LED lighting features, it looks like, talking about uh, different lighting modes, like the breathing type mode which we also saw on the A keyboard that we looked at last time. It 
it says on the top here, get the detailed warranty and product information by checking our website. And directs us there. And then on the back, on the back, it has a description of what is actually a very uh, uh, kind of poetic description of why they chose the name Excalibur. It says here, the name Excalibur was first used for King Arthur's sword by the French romancers. Worried that Arthur would fall in battle, Merlin took the king to a magical lake where a mysterious hand thrust itself up from the water, holding aloft a magnificent sword. It was the Lady of the Lake offering Arthur a magic unbreakable blade fashioned by an Avalonian elf smith. It's like flavor text for my keyboard. The real form of the swords told to be unbreakable and comes out to be stronger than all the other swords. Some questionable translation issues here, but it emits a good deal of its own light with brightness greater than moonlight when swung. Equipped with a full metal board, floating key structure, the Excalibur fears no battles, no challengers, and no devils. Whoever wields the Excalibur will not be defeated by anyone except himself. <laughs> Getting a little bit philosophical on my keyboard box. Um, I appreciate the intent here, although I find it a little bit, uh, it's a little cheesy. I guess. And the typesetting is weird. There's like spaces after every apostrophe. Let's see here. Like these. I don't quite know why that's the case. I assume it's a sort of translation issue. And then also on the back here, it has some specifications. Uh, gives the dimensions and weight of the board. It's hefty. The box is a good weight. It lists it as a uh, three quarters of a kilogram, 750 grams. Cord length, 180 centimeters. Uh, that is very long, if that's the case. It's almost two meters. Well, I guess that's about five feet or something like that. Uh, Keycap material, ABS with coated texture, switch brand cherry. All right. Some more features on the end here. 84 key, 10 keyless compact layout, full metal board, cherry mechanical switches, pure white backlighting, anti-ghosting, and innovative lighting effects evidently. So, let's uh, open it up. I'll say the packaging looks serviceable. I think it's maybe a little bit... Uh, something, something about it just feels a little bit low rent. Like it just gradients maybe just look kind of dated or cheap or something it is only packaging of course but uh, it doesn't really look premium I guess maybe and inside keyboard is nestled in a sort of padded area with some cardboard to buffer it and it has this uh, this plastic kind of overlay 
sitting over top of it, ostensibly to protect it, I suppose. Although I don't know that it really serves much of a function altogether. Sounds kind of nice, though. Anyway, plastic overlay. And then here we have the board itself. Uh, wrapped in plastic, it would seem. <laughs> so, my very first impression, you can hear those blue keys. Uh, well, first of all, it's tiny. <laughs> Look at this thing. <laughs> it is so small. It's kind of cute, actually. Pint-sized. Like my hand covers half of it, the board, and it's heavy, it's very weighty, and it feels quite nice, actually. Set the board itself aside for a moment, and this is interesting. Uh, detachable cable. We'll take a look at that in a moment, but let's just uh, see what else the package contains in the box. So here's just a very basic slip with keyboard shortcuts, function key shortcuts. I guess this is all we get in the way of instructions for how this operates. This is a uh, lighting effects, it looks like, uh, along with some other features. Looks like it has uh, several customizable lighting profiles that it will save, as well as a handful of lighting effects and intensities that we can cycle through. And we'll look at that shortly. Um, dear customers, thanks for purchasing our Drivo product. Feel free to contact us for any questions you've met or been curious about. Uh, after sales service card. That's uh, funny. This is sort of what you'd expect to be the warranty card. Oops. But it says nothing about a warranty on here. Um, but the outside of the box did direct us to their website. Nevertheless, uh, we have that. USB cable. Uh, this does not look like 180 centimeters. Not at all. And obviously it's not um, braided fabric or anything. It's just, just plastic. A little bit thin at that actually. That's probably I don't know, 40 centimeters right there. This actually is not very long. <laughs> if you look at it, this is maybe a meter at best, I would say. Well, maybe a little bit more, maybe a meter, yeah. 120 centimeters. It's not very long though. Actually, it feels surprisingly short for a keyboard. Um, and that could be a problem if you're trying to route this cable around the back of a desk to a PC tower. So, hmm, strange. And I also...
also see it. Uh, a little keycap puller in bright blue. Uh, just plastic. Nothing fancy. Always nice to see these included though. And we'll try it out for posterity's sake in a moment. And that appears to be everything, I think. Oh, and a Drevo sticker. Always need the sticker. It's fine. <laughs> I guess it's nice to have a little addition in there if you really feel strongly about your Drevo product. Uh, and that is it. That is all we have. So um, there are no, uh, there's no wrist rest, obviously. There are no extra keycaps, textured keycaps or anything like that. It's just what we get on the board. A couple of little inserts, very bare bones uh, instructions. Uh, and then that keycap puller and that, uh, that strangely short USB cable, which just seems like an odd place for them to cut a corner, you know? Uh, how, can, how expensive can it really be to uh, include a slightly longer cable? I don't know, but probably not very much. Anyway, uh, a fairly bare bones package altogether. Uh, not a lot of extras, um, but I guess it gets the job done. Uh, and the keyboard does seem relatively well protected. I should also say that it uh, shipped uh, very well protected. I received it totally wrapped in bubble wrap uh, and, and, and a bag, so there was no worries about damage in shipping. Uh, but uh, the box itself is, is fairly spartan, a fairly bare bones package. And just think it looks maybe a little bit cheap. I don't know. What do you think? You can let me know down in the comments, but I'm just not crazy about the design. But I do like the all black, sort of glossy black finish. That's nice. Okay, let's look at the board itself. So, as I mentioned, as you can see, it's very tiny. <laughs> this is a small board. Um, and that's good because that's how it's advertised. It's very compact and uh, it's kind of unique in that regard. I don't think I've ever seen a keyboard that is quite so space efficient as this one. Uh, and you can see there are, there are really, there are no gaps. I mean, there's the little gaps between the keys, but there's no wasted space. Um, arrow keys over here. Immediately above, we have our little end, page up, page down, home, cluster, delete. Uh, that's been uh, reshaped and sort of stuck around the uh, outside edge here. Uh, we got all our function keys along the top. Our number keys. Uh, and then a standard layout below that. Um, so overall, the layout is obviously non-standard, uh, but uh, I think that it is a smart use of space. I think it's uh, intelligently designed uh, and very, very space efficient. So if you really need a small, small keyboard that has mechanical keys, uh, then this is probably a, a good option for you. Uh, of course, it is 10 keyless, so there's no keypad uh, on the right-hand side here, but um, I was noticing, if you look here, maybe you can see this, maybe you can't, I'm not sure, but uh, on the sides of some of these keys, uh, you can see they've been mapped to functions that would be on the keypad normally. And I suspect 
that there's some kind of function function key combination which will turn this section of keys into a keypad so you don't lose that functionality entirely um, but uh, the keys do play double duty I'm assuming that's what that means but we'll, we'll find out when we test it uh, other impressions like I said it is solid uh, it is in fact all metal this base plate is uh, you can't really hear but it's it's metal we have our little USB port on the back here for our <laughs> strangely short cable uh, This is all kind of a, a soft touch metal with a pleasing finish. Uh, it has on the back here feet, rubber feet, uh, that do not appear to be adjustable in any way, which is very odd because that is a very standard feature. <laughs> on most keyboards. Uh, and if I place it down like this, uh, the angle that it sits at is fine. Uh, it's, it's just raised up a little bit. It doesn't feel uh, uncomfortable or anything, but I just find it funny that there's no way to set it to lay flat uh, because some people find that more ergonomically sound, more comfortable. Uh, but it's just got these big rubber feet and then these little little ones at the at the bottom and uh, it feels sturdy enough when it sits but yeah I just especially in this price range at this price point I find it very odd that it's lacking uh, height or angle adjustment um, but all that aside, overall impression is really positive. It feels very, very solid. There is zero flex. It is stiff. It is heavy. It feels like a, a brick. It is very solid. And let's talk about these keycaps for a moment. Well, first you can hear delightful blue switches this board I can't even remember if I've mentioned it yet but this board has uh, blue switches um, and it, it ships with other variety or other switches as well there's uh, uh, brown red and black I believe are all available as well um, but nice clicky Genuine Cherry MX switches. Sound good, feel good. Not crazy about that space bar, but uh, that is often the case, as a matter of fact. It, it's not uncommon for space bars to feel a little mushy. This one has a bit of wiggle to it see the other keys however no such thing they are very very solid mm -hmm. and there is no scratchiness to the action of these keys they feel smooth uh, and I got sidetracked I was going to mention the keycaps the keycaps are delightful actually <laughs> um, I wasn't quite sure what the marketing material meant by saying specially coated keycaps, but uh, what it means, evidently, is that uh, they have this matte coating that is, pardon me, very um, appealing to the touch. It's very soft, it's kind of silky, um, it sort of repels like uh, grease uh, and fingerprints. Uh, and it just feels very pleasant 
It's nice under the fingers. As a matter of fact, it reminds me of uh, very much of my Corsair K70, uh, which has a similar texture to the keycaps. Uh, and so when they say it's a premium keycap set, they sort of mean it. It's not all advertising bluster. Uh, because I, I really like the feel of these keys under my fingers. I just want to keep touching it. It's so soft. It's very satisfying and very pleasant to the touch. So that is uh, what this board looks like, the physical features of the board. Let's just use this keycap puller just to pull. Uh, let's just take out one of the arrow keys here. Grab onto it. Come on now. There. Nope. This is proving more difficult than not to. Maybe because I'm doing it from the wrong angle. Let's try this. There we go. So the keycaps themselves are of the double shot injection molded variety which um, seems to be par for the course for a lot of these Chinese keyboards. Uh, but the plastic feels thick enough. And uh, like I said, uh, that finish, that matte coating is really nice. And then nestled underneath, you can see the Cherry MX Blue switch, and you probably can't see this, but uh, I can read, it says right there, it is stamped Cherry, it is authentic branded, uh, and then the little LED above, which in this case will be white, because uh, as I said, no RGB on this board, just white LEDs. Okay, so I do like the compactness of this board a lot, and I, I do like the feel of this board a lot. It makes a good first impression, I'll tell you that much. Um, it is it's so tiny. It is very small. It fits under both my hands. Uh, it's quite cute, pint-sized thing, but well-built by, uh, by the way it feels, so... Okay, so now that we've taken a look at every angle of this board, the branding on the back is kept to a minimum. It just says Excalibur. It actually looks like it says Excalibur. <laughs> the L is in lowercase, whereas everything else is in uppercase, which is a, a strange choice. But, uh, and then the Drevo insignia here uh, but who really spends time looking at the underside of their keyboard anyway right but it's this very uh, very minimalistic design overall that I quite like uh, so first impressions are good I would say so anyway let's plug this thing in and I'm going to take it for a little <clears throat> test drive here I'm not going to talk very much as I do that. I'm just going to type on it, and you'll be able to see some of the LED effects. I'll cycle through those, uh, and you'll be able to hear it, and uh, just get a feel for what it's like to type on. Uh, and then after that, we'll reconvene, and uh, we'll talk about it a little bit more, and I'll summarize my overall feelings. Uh, after I've had a chance to use it for a bit. So let's go type on this a little bit, shall we? Okay, so here we have uh, the board plugged in. You can see it illuminated. And I'm going to very quickly step through some of the lighting functions before spending a bit of time typing. So if we press the function key over here, 
we can hold down function and press the uh, left arrow. And that allows us to cycle through several different kinds of uh, lighting effects. This one is a ripple effect, which is quite lovely, but not very practical. Very pretty. Uh, we have this silly effect, which they call snake, and it's basically what it sounds like. The lighting snakes its way back and forth across the keyboard. Uh, we have this slightly more practical effect where the keys that are depressed illuminate briefly, but are otherwise off. And then we have one more effect, which is a breathing style effect, where the whole keyboard uh, together gets darker and then brighter and then darker. I don't know how well that effect comes through on camera, but anyway. So those are the four effects available. Then we also have programmable uh, per key lighting. So if I hold down function and press, uh, for instance, two, you can see that I can press keys and they will remain lit. I can press them again to turn them off. And then I can press function two again to lock that in as preset two. And then I can press function one uh, to cycle through the various presets. It looks like there's five in total. So there's our preset two again. Three, four, five. They're all empty because I haven't done anything with them. And we can go back and edit our preset too. Basic per key backlighting programmability. Turn off all those. We'll just keep WASD on. How about that? Okay. And uh, if we want to turn everything back on. What do we do? There, we cycle back through our lighting modes. So that appears to be the functionality with the lighting. Uh, it's fairly basic. It gets the job done though, and it looks nice. You will notice that all the LEDs are on. Uh, so none of them are uh, faulty, which is good. And they get quite bright, actually. Uh, we can control the brightness in a number of steps. And we can turn it right off as well. How many steps is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight is off. So that's pretty good brightness control, actually. Let's do it two down from the, the brightest. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, there is the ability to hold down the function key and hit this, there's a shortcut key up here, it says P5 on it, and that uh, converts a handful of keys into uh, these ones over here into number pad functionality. So you still do get to have numpad functionality to some degree uh, in this compact frame. So that's quite a bit of functionality all crammed into a very tiny footprint. Uh, 
Okay, so now I'm going to shut up, and I'm just going to type for a bit, and uh, you can listen, and uh, and uh, hear what it's like those Cherry MX Blue keys.
Okay, so uh, after a bit of typing, uh, you've heard what it sounds like. I've felt what it feels like to type on. Uh, and these are, as one would expect, uh, very consistent Cherry MX Blue keys. Uh, they are a little bit stiffer to type on than the brown switches that I'm used to. They take a little bit more actuation force to depress. But um, that aside, I think they feel very nice. They don't feel in the least bit scratchy. And there's really no pinging to be heard uh, from this board either, which is nice. My Corsair K70 does ping a little bit when typing. Uh, and each of these keys just feels very solid. There's no wobble. My one gripe, if I have one here, is this space bar. I just don't like it that much. Uh, I think it's a little bit, just a little bit mm, light feeling uh, and a little bit wiggly. A little too much play, but otherwise, uh, this is a joy to type on. It's quite pleasant. Uh, so, with that uh, little test drive aside, or completed, uh, I'm going to uh, pack this up again and we'll reconvene to summarize what I think this board does well, uh, what it doesn't quite hit the mark on, and talk a little bit about pricing and this board's place in the competitive landscape before providing a final verdict. Okay, so we've taken a detailed look at Drivo's Excalibur keyboard, and we've had the opportunity to take it for a little test drive. Uh, where are we at? Uh, what do we think about it? Well, let's start off by talking about what this board does particularly well. So for one, I really, really like uh, the stylish, uh, smart, compact design of this board. Uh, Drivo does an excellent job of keeping it looking sharp and minimalistic, but packing a lot of functionality into a very tiny footprint. There's uh, uh, a lot of features in that little frame. And if you are in the market for an ultra compact keyboard, uh, you really need to look no further because I can't think of a single board that uh, packs quite so much into such uh, a tiny frame, such a small footprint. Uh, so that is something that Drivo gets very right with its Excalibur board. Uh, the second thing that this board gets really, really right is its solid, all-metal construction. It feels really, really good. It feels weighty, uh, and it feels just high quality. It feels like a well-built product. Uh, and so that premium feel and those premium materials help to justify its price. A third positive point for this board is its use of genuine Cherry MX switches, and that's sort of a continuation of the use of high quality materials, which we see throughout uh, the board. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the review, uh, there are a lot of clones out there that do a pretty good job of emulating the feel of Cherry MX switches, but uh, it is nice to have the genuine article because you know that the quality is going to be good. They're the industry standard. Uh, they're rated for 50 million keystrokes a piece, which is more than you'll ever use. Uh, and you know that there'll be consistency from key to key in terms of actuation force and uh, the feel, the action. And I did quite enjoy typing on this board. Uh, it was a pleasure to type on and the blue switches on this particular board felt really, really good. Uh, of course, Drivo offers the Excalibur with other uh, switches as well, including Cherry's MX Brown, Black, and Red as well. Another thing that Drivo gets really right with this board 
is uh, the keycaps. I will admit that I was uh, dubious about their claims uh, on the product packaging that said, uh, you know, premium uh, finish or whatever. I can't remember exactly what the wording was, but uh, a special coating, premium coating or something like that. But yeah, uh, these keycaps do feel really nice. They have a very soft kind of matte, almost silky texture to them uh, that feels nice under the fingers and it helps repel uh, greasy fingerprints and things like that. And finally, uh, it's nice to see 24 key rollover. Uh, it's not unlimited like N key rollover, but really 24 keys is all you're going to need. I can't think of a usage scenario where you would be holding down 24 keys consecutively uh nowhere close so it's uh good to see though that it has a relatively high ceiling uh, for its anti-ghosting and the uh, key rollover features okay so now that we've talked about what drivo's excalibur does right uh let's talk a bit about what it does less right not so right <laughs> Uh, there are a handful of points that I picked out uh, as we were looking at the board and as I was using it uh, that uh, I'm not super duper thrilled about. The first one, and this is a strange one, is that uh, there are no adjustable feet <laughs> on this keyboard. And that seems like an odd omission to me uh, because adjustable feet that let you set the angle and height of the board are absolutely standard features on every keyboard that I have ever used, I think, or the vast majority anyway, uh, yet this board seems to lack them. So uh, if you prefer your keyboard to lay perfectly flat, uh, you're kind of out of luck with this keyboard because those, those rubber uh, feet on the bottom, uh, they can't be adjusted whatsoever. So me personally it doesn't bother too much i think the angle that it sits at by default uh, feels good but uh, for some that could be a significant drawback and it just seems like an odd omission especially at this price point another thing that i wasn't crazy about and this is somewhat a nitpick but i thought the packaging just looked and felt a little cheap uh, from the graphic design to the, the type setting to just uh, the way it was all presented. It didn't really feel like a premium product. Um, and again, you know, your mileage may vary. Some people just don't care about that kind of thing. It's all about the, the product itself. But um, certainly you have to consider the entire package when you're doing a review like this. So uh, I just felt that the packaging and presentation was a little bit cheap, especially considering the price point. And on that note, I was a little disappointed to see that there were very few included uh, sort of pack-in accessories or extras. Uh, it was a very bare-bones package altogether. There was a, a keycap puller included, which is nice to see, uh, but there is no wrist rest. Uh, there is no additional uh, keys, extra keycaps rather, you know, or anything like that. And uh, uh, altogether, uh, there just wasn't a whole lot in the box. There wasn't even a product manual to speak of. There was a little slip of paper uh, with some really basic instructions on it, but that was about it. Uh, and strangely, no warranty card either, uh, or not one that explicitly talks about the warranty. I had to go to the manufacturer's website to find out if this was warrantied at all. And indeed it is. It comes with a one-year warranty on it, which is fine. Uh, but it was just odd that none of that information was included in the package itself. And one final oddity of this board is the short USB cable uh, that comes with the board. Uh, it's detachable, which I have no problem with. I think that's actually probably a plus, if, if anything. Uh, but it is a little on the short side, um, which just seems like an odd cost-cutting, corner-cutting measure um, in a keyboard at this price point, and with generally fairly 
uh, premium quality components. You know, it feels good for the most part. Uh, and if you have a desktop setup where uh, you're routing your USB cable, uh, you know, over the back of your desk to a, a somewhat distant tower or through some kind of cable routing hole and down a, you know, a channel or something to your tower, uh, it may not reach, <laughs> which just seems like a, like I said, a, a strange oversight, I guess, on Drevo's part, uh, when you could add another two to three feet of USB cable for the cost of next to nothing, and then it would be uh, a non-issue. Okay, so where does this leave us with Drevo's Excalibur? Let's uh, talk a little bit about pricing and uh, competition in this price bracket and put it in sort of the big picture context here. Uh, first of all, if you want genuine Cherry MX switches, uh, you're going to be paying a minimum of $50 US. You really can't get them any cheaper than that. And that is a bare bones board, uh, plastic construction, no backlighting. So that's the bare minimum for genuine Cherry MX switches. If you want a backlight, you're looking at about 70 US dollars as your point of entry, again, with genuine Cherry MX switches. Uh, but that's still going to be plastic construction, not really premium materials. Stepping up from there to the $80 price point, things get a little bit more interesting because at about 80 US dollars, we start to see some entries from very uh, well-established, highly regarded manufacturers like uh, Corsair, like Logitech, uh, and these keyboards have competitive feature sets, fixed backlighting, um, and genuine Cherry MX switches. Uh, at this price point, we're still looking at plastic construction for the most part, but you do get the brand name. Drevo's uh, Excalibur is sold for 90 US dollars, so an additional $10 uh, over some of those uh, competitive boards from, from big name uh, manufacturers. And so what do you get for that extra $10? Well, you get the all metal construction, which as I mentioned earlier, I like a lot. It feels really good. It feels very solid, but uh, you also lose the reliability of a brand name or the peace of mind or whatever you want to call it. There's a, a certain value that comes with that. And so uh, you, as the consumer need to make up your mind and decide what's worth more to you uh, and whether you're willing to perhaps take a bit of a risk on a brand that might not be as well known but on a product that uh, that has potentially better build quality or better materials um, and just to take it one step further here if you go up an additional ten dollars to the the $100 uh, US dollar price point, uh, you have some really compelling boards <laughs> sitting at that point. You have things like uh, Corsair's uh, Lux 65, uh, which is like Drevo's Excalibur, a compact 10 keyless board, but uh, it's an RGB board, so multicolored backlighting. Um, and like Drevo's board, it has um, a metal backplate, uh, genuine Cherry MX keys, uh, and it's from uh, a reputable manufacturer from Corsair. And so uh, Drevo's Excalibur is really kind of hemmed in from both sides, um, and it faces some very stiff competition at its price point. Now, it's worth noting that Drevo does have uh, a trick up its sleeve, and that is that you can purchase the Excalibur with uh, clone switches. So it is available for sale without the genuine Cherry MX keys. Um, and if you're willing to go with the clones, they're unspecified clones, I don't know what make exactly, but if you're willing to do that, uh, it's only 65 US dollars. 
And at that price point, it is a very compelling board, I would say, provided everything else remains the same. I can't speak to that version of the board because I don't have that version of the board. I have the $90 version with the genuine switches. But uh, it's certainly worth considering if you are saying to yourself, gosh, I like everything about this board, but it just seems a little bit expensive. Um, because at $65, that's a significant savings. And in my experience, a lot of those clone switches do a very, very good job of emulating Cherry's genuine switches, and they feel pretty darn good. So well worth considering that option as well. Okay, so what's the take-home message here, the final verdict? Well, uh, I like Drevo's Excalibur uh, as reviewed a lot. I think it's uh, a well-built, uh, smartly designed, good-looking, ultra-compact keyboard that was a pleasure to use and type on. Uh, but I think it's priced about, say, $10 too high uh, for me to give it uh, my unqualified recommendation. It faces some really stiff competition in this price bracket from some uh, well-established, highly regarded manufacturers like uh, Logitech, like Corsair, uh, that have products uh, with comparable feature sets. But if you are in the market for an ultra-compact keyboard with the specific set of features that uh, Drevo's Excalibur has, uh, and especially if you really want that space efficiency, uh, then I think this keyboard would be a fine addition to your desktop. All right, well, that wraps up our relaxing review of Drevo's Excalibur mechanical keyboard. I hope that you found this informative. I hope that you found this relaxing. I hope that you enjoyed it. And I look very forward to having you back here next time. Bye for now.